Hey everyone, all right, all right, we are here. Excited, yes, we are being live stream, we got it. You are welcome, yes, welcome, welcome, welcome to a better way before and after, yes I do. I think we've gotten to the end of this, um, this particular streaming that we always have, because when we get to the couples part, that means we have reached it. We have done the beginning, we have done the husband and the commitment that the husband needs to give. And then we've done Mrs. Eve and the commitment that Sarah needs to give to Abraham. So now we're going to talk about to Abraham and Sarah at the same time. So like, if you need to talk, you can always DM me. And we're here. We're here before you say, will you? And before you say, yes, I do. Sometimes you might need to get counseling. You might need to, you know, get somebody else to kind of look for you, what you cannot see. You know what I'm saying? So how? are you doing today i hope your day went well i hope your day is going well i hope your day is ending well too so follow me remember before and after yes i do i think this is going to be the last one i'm thinking i'm thinking and i also have wisdom for women on sundays and of course i have joy's food pharmacy i have something exciting on that one how you can have lemongrass year round i'm super excited to share that so I'm working on that, so follow me. Make sure you follow me also on YouTube. We're there hanging out. Hang out with us. So today, let's talk about the husband and the wife. Yeah. Husband and wife together, okay? Husband and wife together. Let us talk about Let us Let us talk about that. So one thing you should remember, both of you have to agree on this. The bride-to-be and the groom-to-be you both have to agree on one thing, that you will love God above your spouse. You see, that keeps you in check. That keeps you in line. That is the greatest foundation you can ever give your relationship. That is the greatest foundation that you can ever allow your bring your children into this world to be into. Our God is going to be above all. Yes, the man is the head of the house, but... God is the head of the man, and we must never forget that. Adam or Abraham, <laughs> the groom, must never forget that God is the head, not you. You also are the head, but you are a designated head, okay? So you do not abuse the authority that God has put you into. And woman, don't worry about it. Man, don't say I'm the head. You already it. We know. Okay. It is as it is designated to you. You're not trying to be the head. You're not shouting to be the head. You're not um, how will I say, fighting to be the head. You're just simply the head. So let's look at now together. This is what both of you have to do together. This is what both of you have to consider together. Remember, I said number one, you must decide between the both of you that God is above you wife and God is above your husband. Meaning in what, so that that will help you in whatever you're doing to your spouse, to the group, to the husband and to the wife, you will know that God is saying it and God is, you know, you know, God is in charge here. And so, like I said, that will put in, that will help you kind of put a lot of checks and balances when you know that God is the head in this whole, the ultimate head, all right? And, um, Two things. Listen, listen, listen. I'm going to have a journal house very soon. Once it's out, you can have, you can purchase it. And um, I'm working on it. God give me grace. So here, husband plus wife. God told the man and the woman in Genesis 1.26. Remember, God blessed both of them. So woman, you are blessed. And the man is blessed too. There's somebody that is blessed above anybody. The man is blessed and the woman is blessed. And God told the man and the woman, be fruitful. So I multiply. So fruitfulness and multiplication, the man and the woman got to be in it together because that's what God ordained. He said, he told them, be fruitful and multiply. As a man, you may think, oh, I'm a single man. I'm a single woman. I can do about myself. I got everything that I need. Da, 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 da. No, you and we are supposed to be fruitful and multiply together. And we're supposed to fill the earth, replenish, procreate. It's okay to have children. And if you don't want to have children, listen, there's so many avenues there. There's fostering and there's adoption. Just go ahead. You know, want to have 10? If your power carrier, waiting be my own. 
I mean, subdue to earth, meaning take authority. The authority is not given to subdue to earth, it's not given just to the man. It is two of us. So husband, remember that your wife is also um, supposed to subdue the earth, not just to you. And you wife, don't just be subdued the earth alone and watch your husband in the bottom. No, he is supposed to subdue the earth too. Don't be comfortable. You become a doctor and your husband is a conductor. Doctor, doctor. Okay. Mm -mm. He is supposed also to subdue the earth together. You have dominion together. Man and woman have dominion. Husband and wife have dominion together. 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 Yeah. It says, and also remember that your, your efforts, it said in Ecclesiastes 4, 9, 9, 4, 9 to 12, it said two is better than one, always better than one. You see, when you have, uh, sometimes, I think last week or so, I was thinking about musicians. Most of the time, these musicians, where they blow, so they, they just they blow everywhere. If you look at it, most of them started as a quartet or as a duet or something, they were together, together. No solo. It is this generation, everybody wants to start solo. And even the ones that are coming solo now, look at what they're producing. Most of the time, if you go to their history, they always have started with somebody with a group. And then after a while, they are like K-pop. K-pop now is disintegrating. They want to go solo. But you know, K-pop, K-pop started together. So how many of them in K-pop? See? So it's always together. It stayed at, listen, the Bible, I, I have to go back to the book. Word of God. What am I, what am I going to do with marriage? There's nowhere else to go. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 to 12. Two is always better than one. So the effort that you and your husband will put in is always better than one. I used to tell somebody, I said, the problem that your parents had, you know, talking to somebody, I said, the, the problem that your parents had, your father was earning a good paying job. Your mother was working at a good, I was earning good too. There was no need for your family to be in poverty. So what you had was the man earning well, the woman earning well, and the family is in poverty. Something wrong with that math. There's something wrong with that because everybody was trying to go solo, even though both men were making good money. So you have to know before you go in that O'Neill, honey, boo, honey, boo, boo, uh -huh. two is better than one. Okay? If joint account work for you, good. If it doesn't, there's also another way you can do joint account. You can open a separate account and say, you know what? Put a percentage of your income in it and, you know, keep whatever you want, you know? So the man, most of your chunk, the chunk of your money go in there. <laughs> I, have a, I have a friend. <laughs> when I asked him about the husband's uh, check, he said, what, 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 what? the check better come to me, girl. That check comes to me. I'm like, so what happens to your own check? He said, my check stay with me. He said, my mother taught me. <laughs> what, I'm, what I'm telling you now, I think she's about 60 something. He said, my mother taught me. Never to give my paycheck to a man. My husband gives me his paycheck. I was like, oh, girl, go. I feel your pay. I feel your group. I feel you, baby. Okay? Yeah, two is always better than one. Let's put our effort together. Go, uh, let's collate. Let's uh, do everything, and then we can do better. I mean, what are God to say it? So you, that's why even companies are merging. You have companies that merge, that are doing major. Why, why do you think they're doing major for? They're merging. Why? Why? And so we, the companies in the world are merging. Marriages are what? Separating. Uh -uh, come on, we can do better. Because God already told us. Malachi 2. And that goes with, the, with what God said that you should fill the earth. Procreate is okay. It's okay to procreate. It's okay to, if you can have babies, go ahead and adopt. Go ahead and foster. There's so many children in orphanages. Oh, I'm looking forward to adopting. Yes, yes, I'll put it out there. There's so many children in orphanages. There are so many children in homeless, motherless baby home. Children should not be there. And people are sleeping in church. They are fasting. They are going on the mountain. <laughs> Prophets, they chop your money straight up, man. And everything is just going down because you're looking, oh, I heard somebody say one time, I have to burn a child of my own. Which child is your own? Oh, anyway, you want to burn a child that is your own. You know, just in 2022, when you think about there's so many children that need mothers. There's so many children that need godly homes. There's so many children that need, you know, a father, and a, you know, a father and a mother and to be in a home where two parents are. It's wonderful to go ahead, step out there and be that parent. Remember, talk about it. You know, in the beginning, I said, ID yourself, how many children you want. If you want 10 and you want to, don't marry because they're going to be frustrated for somebody that wants to have a football team and you don't want to have a football team. So you already know that X, it's not going to be me. 
because I don't want, in fact, I don't want no issue. I don't want no, I don't want one, I don't want two, you want 10. Let's forget it. It's not going to work. It's not okay. Let us make in between. Then when you enter, they will have combos. So you don't even give yourself to stress. This world is already full of stress. I mind them telling my sex a lot of work and they're stressing it. So you have to make sure you reduce your stress before you go inside. Okay. So this is one of the tips that you have to reduce your stress before you go inside. All right. And Romans 12, 10, be, decide to be kindly affectionate to one another. You have to look for means. You know, the problem with marriages is that when people get married, you know, you know, they love on each other first year, for first five years. It's that they stay or they scatter for five years. So the ones that actually cross the four five years, because of issues in life, they have children, they get work, they get school, they did, 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 did business, opening new business, shut down, da, 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 da. They forget to take time for each other. So you have to make sure that you put things in place. Like, okay, you know what? Every year we're going to go on vacation. Or you can also put stuff in place at home, kindly affectionate, let's do that one. Like, you know what, before you go to bed, mm -mm. okay? Like when my children come, I say, ah, when we finish, my daughter, ah, ah, you know, I'm a hug, I'm a hug grabber. I, I collect hugs, I'm a hug collector. You see, some people collect coins, some people collect newspapers, some people collect everything. But as for me, I decide that I'm a hog collector. I collect hogs, okay, from my family as much as I can. So you can decide that. You can say, okay, you know, put little, little things in place that, okay, you know, rituals. I call it love rituals. Like, you know, what are we going to do? Are uh, you going to call me every time? Are you going to call me lunchtime? Are we going to have lunch once a week? You know, sometimes, sometimes people get so busy. And oh my goodness, if you're in diaspora, if you're abroad, you know, the, the work schedule is crazy. Your husband may be coming home when you're going to work, or you may be coming home when your husband is going to work. So you have to look for love rituals, how you can be, you can say thank you, you know, check on each other, get flower, get to eat, you know, be kindly affectionate, make up in your mind, put stuff in place that this is what we're going to do. So this is our marriage rituals. Rituals not be only on top of bed, not be that one only, okay? There are other rituals that don't involve that. Like, make sure you say thank you. Make sure maybe when you finish eating or when I cook, you know, pat me on the back, you know, play with me, kindly affectionate. Thank you and please go a long way. Hugs and pecs go a long way. Uh, with it, you know, just think of how you can be kindly affectionate to that man and to that woman. And one thing also, prefer one another. And please do not prefer an outsider above your spouse. God is number one and your spouse next. You cannot prefer, as a man, you cannot prefer another woman over your wife. It's just going to break the marriage down. And as a woman, you cannot prefer another man over your husband. It's just going to break the marriage down. So you must prefer one another. You don't allow anybody be the one that your, hus your husband got to go through to talk to you or your wife has to go through to talk to you to get something from you. Ah, that is twisted. That marriage will not survive. It's a matter of time. So prefer one another. You have to make up your mind now before you step in. Tell you, you know, this is why you're going to make commitment to yourself, to each other. I will prefer you above every other. Or a wife, you cannot prefer your pastor over your husband. Husband, you cannot prefer your pastor's wife or your women's leader or a sister in the church or maybe somebody at your work or somebody outside, another woman over your wife. That is devastating. That is just... Ah, that is the, is, is like knocking at the end. That is the, like the last thread. It's a matter of time. That thread is getting very thin. So my you my break, no, I'm telling you to break. You can't blame nobody, you blame yourself. All right, and you submit one to another. That's one thing we don't talk about. Ephesians 5, 21. It says submit one to another. So submission is both ways. Yes, the husband is the head. Yes, the wife submits, but also we submit one to another. To make for peace. Ephesians 4.25 says, speak the truth. There's no need for you to lie to one another. There's no need for you to tell lies. Just tell the truth. Well, is it a yes or a no? You like them, you know, like them. You like them, you know, like them. Then you decide um, what you're going to do. All right? Tell the truth and let the devil be ashamed with stay. 
And then do not refuse each other. We talked about that with the man and the woman. The body of the man belongs to the woman, to the wife, and the body of the wife belongs to the husband. And definitely hashtag a guy. Be careful who you let into your home. Oh, yes, that is very important. You know, when you bring people into your home, they can either, they can scatter your home. They can scatter your home. Just know that. So you got to be very careful. Hashtag a guy. I don't speak much more than that. But, you know, you have to decide from the beginning. Where are you going to let them live with you? Um, if they come to live with you, like how long are they going to stay? Are they going to let somebody come indefinitely come and stay with you? Are going to give them one week, two weeks, two weeks, you know? Indefinitely stay. People not coming to your house and not even deciding when, when to leave and when not to leave is, is unacceptable in a, in a marriage, especially if a grown woman coming to, into your home, your married home, or a grown-up man coming to your marriage. We don't hear story. Story plenty. We don't hear story. Plenty story. So why are you going to let that happen to you? Let's learn from a guy. Okay, let's learn from a guy. And then uh, no sexual immorality. Ah, uh, yes. Yes. Don't tell me you had your body no be wood. Eh, wood the ball for fire. Okay. You had to, the Bible tells us to what? Contain your body. Have it under check. That is something you have to decide. What can you, can you ask the man? Mm, do you think for any reason, if anything can happen, so I'm giving you a tip now. If anything happened, because man will always say, well, because she, my wife did not give it to me, so I go outside. I don't even know what the woman will say. What will the woman say? Well, maybe because my husband did not do it well, so I go outside. I don't know if that's what the woman will say. But, you know, what will be your, what will make you go outside? Ask him. He will say, oh, I'll never go outside. I'm telling him, please never say never, because you never know. You never reach that bridge. So if you ever reach that bridge, ask yourself, if this man go outside, what am I going to do? How will I be able to handle it? Will I take it? You look at him now. Okay? So that's something you have to do. And something you have to commit to yourself. That in this marriage where we won't enter, so no sexual immorality. If you're having a feeling for a man or a woman, let us know, tell the truth. Because sometimes, you know, I, I also believe, sometimes I watch some movies, and in that movie, I was like, maybe something is happening on the ground. Maybe a girl came to stay in the house and the, the husband is being about to be compromised. So I always tell myself, if only the husband would just mention it to the wife. That, see, only this person where you brought to my house, your sister or your friend or your niece or your, I don't know, your cousin or whatever. I mean, I don't like it because the way she's doing for me, I don't like it. Maybe something could have been stopped. But most of the time, we don't tell the truth one to another. And when that happens, then compromise happens too. Uh -huh. Because there is no truth telling. Because nobody's saying anything. Everybody's just like going like, uh, you know, nothing is happening. But something is happening. Or maybe it's a hot, you know, maybe it could also be the wife too. Maybe a cousin or a nephew or a friend came to hang out in the house, in the couple's house and... <laughs> And he's doing some things and uh, the wife did not tell the husband, say, well, this is your cousin or your nephew or your friend or your, I don't care. Oh, I don't know what's going on, but I just don't feel the vibe, man. We got to leave, we got to leave our house. If nobody is saying anything, it's a matter of time. When compromise happens, you both have to take the blame. You can't blame the husband. And you can't blame the wife completely because nobody said anything to kind of, Catch the situation before going out of hand. And the key thing, learn from a guy. Do not bring anybody to your home. Because if you do, we are still suffering it now. Till today, huh? we are still suffering it. Okay. You love your spouse as you love yourself. Not more than yourself. Hmm. In yetunko? In yetunko? Love your spouse as you love yourself not more than yourself. You know, women are the ones that are guilty of this. <laughs> you love, you don't love somebody more than you. If what Jesus tells us that you love your neighbor as yourself. You must love yourself. There's some women who are going through DV and they're staying in it because they probably love, I, I love him, I love him. And the one that interests, interests me is that you love him, boo, 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 first child, you love him, boo, 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 you open your leg, second child. You love him, but you open a third child. You love him, but you bo, 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 you all the time. Bo, bo, bo. You cannot love somebody 
more than you love yourself. That is contrary to scripture. You have to love them as you love yourself. What you don't take, you don't let other people give it to you. What you will not eat, you don't give it to other people to eat either. So that is coded. Learn from that, okay? And marriage is sacrifice. And when you sacrifice a marriage, is equal to success. Listen, marriage is sacrifice. If you're not ready to sacrifice, you're not ready to get married. Don't do it because marriage is sacrifice. And when you sacrifice in marriage, you're going to succeed in marriage. Sacrifice is equal to success in marriage. If you're not ready to sacrifice, everybody will sacrifice. You know, it's not a case of the wife sacrifice everything and then the wife, husband sacrifice nothing. You know, the husband wants to be outside all the time, going to clubs, going to parties, doing this, doing that, you know, nothing to sacrifice. Like, okay, let me take over the children today. Okay, hey, go oh, girl, girl, come on, come on. You, you go, you go, go do pedicure, go do manicure, go do facial, or go to the mall. I'll take care of children today. Do you do that for your wife? Or the wife is just supposed to sacrifice everything and you sacrifice nothing? No, both of us must decide to sacrifice because in marriage, for your marriage to succeed, there has to be sacrifice on both sides. And you can't, oh, this is, this is very key. You cannot force or demand love and submission. You, the wife, cannot force your husband to love you. If he don't love you, he doesn't love you. Kill a fish, I no go upon that. If Jesus loved me, that is finish. Okay? You can't force nobody to love you. And you, the husband, you can't force the wife to submit to you. There are some men that feel that they have to use force. And they have to use violence. I'm going to make her submit. I'm going to do something to her. I'm going to wicked her so that she will submit, so that she will know I'm the man. That is unnecessary. We cannot force submission and we cannot force love. If somebody doesn't love you anymore, you're going to see it, you're going to know it in their, in their vibes, in their actions. If somebody does not submit to you, you're going to see, in fact, you don't even need to, to tell when, when the wife does not submit to the husband or even when the husband does not submit to the wife. No, we can't kill yourself. But we can't die because they say marry. Marry. I'll tell people that. Marriage does not take anybody to heaven, okay? And Paul said it expressly. It is not all of us that will marry. Some people will marry, some people will not marry. Some people will marry and go to hell. Some people will not marry and go to hell. Okay, so don't kill yourself. If the man don't love you no more, sole, uh-huh. Monico, sole, eh? If the wife decide to show the olorire, sole, none. You pray, you go for counseling. Before you enter, oh, after you don't enter, cancel it while they money and after you all of them are alone. That's what you're gonna do. But listen, don't delete yourself because say person no love you. Because say and don't become wicked. Because say you feel that the person is not submitting enough to you. So you want to be wicked so the person can know that you really mean business. Okay. Yeah. So you have to also do, I, I think I talked about this before, having marriage rituals. Before you go in, you got to decide how are we going to keep the fire burning? Because every fireplace, uh, every fireplace needs firewood. Every, make a talk come again. Say every fireplace needs firewood. There's no fireplace. So I see just go boom, 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 boom. They don't put firewood inside. Of, you know, you replenish it firewood. So that's how marriage is. I just said that it's sacrifice. And for you to have success, you have to sacrifice. So you don't have to sound things like how we have weekly meals together. Especially one book, one book of you are very busy. Are we going to have weekly, weekly meals where we sit down at the table? Are we going to go on vacation, praying together, riding in one car around town? Oh, yeah, that is so exciting. Just like, you know what, let's go for a spin. Let's go for a spin. Honey, honey boo, honey boo boo, sweet up, sugar, dumpling, puff puff, meat pie, sugar cake. Enter the car. Let's go for a spin. You do take your wife for a spin in the car where you take another woman and you're going around town, driving from here to there, from, you're going to, you know, you're just going, you're just going around town. Mm -hmm. The Bible says where your heart is, that is where your treasure will be. Where your treasure is, is where your heart will be. So mm -hmm. before you go in, these are things you got to put in place. And if you're already in, and you know, even like I say the fire don't go down, mm -hmm. you have to find a way to keep the fire burning. So these are things you can take. When was the last time you all went on a vacation together? When was the last time you all went, you know, 
took a spin in town, we went to eat together. But every time you're always at the restaurant with somebody else, where will be your wife? Or you always went to the restaurant with somebody, where will be your husband? You know, you're going to a restaurant with your coworker. Ah, Bob, let's go, let's go for lunch. Oh, Bob, then tomorrow, Henry, let's go for dinner. Then tomorrow, ah, I have a party. Ah, Robert, you want to come? Robert, follow you. Come on now. Come on. Come on. You have to sacrifice if you want your mind to continue to succeed. Marriage involves sacrifice and sacrifice will bring success. So that brings the conclusion our before and after yes. And I also say look out because I'm going to put it's a commitment too. Just like I have for the wife. You see the wife, many things the wife, God told the wife to do. Want to list it. But you see this as a couple together, there's work to be done. The wedding day is glamorous. It's only one day. Marriage takes a long time. So we, our problem is that we take so much work, man. We are working for that wedding day. The dress got to bang. The hair got to bang. The eyelashes and a paintbrush. The face becomes the face of your Mary and Hannah, but you are getting Mary walking down the aisle. Yeah, I don't know. The body got to shame. One shape, 360, 180. Boom, boom. No, my phone. Oh, Nikola is Hey, what is going happen again? The hall, man. The hall got to be flat. Oh, my flight, my little Everything that will be flicking and flying. But one day, the marriage, long, 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 years and going. We don't take time for that. And we spend all this money for one day. One day we spend all this money forgetting that the 10, 20, 30, 40 years we don't go get money again to spend. No damn payment for house. I tell people, Oops. me, I love shots, small wedding. Take that money, go and do damn payment on your house. It makes more sense. Uh, uh, uh. You don't have a house of your own. You are renting an apartment, but you carry thousands and you even borrow money to do it. It doesn't make sense. So what happened? People enter now and they've been to straight up the door. Financial problem. Why do you do, 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 do. I need you to bring your paycheck. We have to pay off this debt. Now me saying you. Let me say you because you want to flick and fly in your way. Don't take all that money. Don't take all your time, energy, and praying and fasting into wedding day. After that, no more praying and fasting. Wedding day is one day. At most, maybe two days. Engagement introduction. So the two days. The rest of the years, uncle. This is why I had this before and after yes, I do. And thank you if you have been following me. Please love, share. You can go back and watch this. Send to a groom that's about to marry. Send to a bride that's about to marry. And this particular last one, send to them whether they are married or they have just said yes or they are not. This, this involves everybody. Whether they have said yes, they're about to say yes at the commitment after they say one to another. This is what they're going to answer to the church. I say, church, make me, let me hear. This is what they have decided. So tomorrow, if anybody go and do sexual immorality, we're going to ask them, but you stood in the church and you committed not to do sexual immorality. You decided that you're going to keep the fire burning. These are the things that you said. Your word will be used against you on judgment day. Mm -hmm. On judgment day. So be careful what you do. Marriage is not a child's play. That's why God said, if a man, not if a boy, if a man finds a wife, okay, right? So there's age for the man. It must be a man, like a man. Sorry to people from over here. Not a man, but a man. <laughs> if a man finds a wife, so marriage is serious business. It's not a chance play. It's not wedding. Wedding is sweet. The gown can bring the tail from here to over there. The gown only one day said, no, that doesn't really make sense. One day gown set, we go thousands and people say, well, I, I, I cannot use wedding gown that somebody has worn. Shoo, who sent person? Who sent me? Who I sent? Who sent me? Who I sent? I say, who sent me? Who I sent? One day cloth. I beg you, leave that thing. Shoo. Anyway, that is me. You know, everybody have their own idea what you want to do. Like I always say, baby, if you can rock it, if you see got everything to rock your world, Hey, my friend will say, knock yourself out, you know, knock it out. 
knock, don't knock anybody out. Or don't slay nobody else. What is slay? Don't slay nobody else. It is yourself. Knock yourself out. I feel you. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, give it. But if you don't, you cannot do that. Know that it's only one day or at most two days. The rest is years ahead. So let's take time and plan for the years ahead. And the years ahead, love cannot, money cannot buy love. Money cannot buy respect. Money cannot buy submission. Money, there's so many things money cannot buy in marriage that if you took time to talk and to work about it and to decide that, remember I said, marriage is sacrifice and sacrifice in marriage equals success. If you take time, make up your mind that you're going to sacrifice, you're going to reap the benefit of marriage. So thank you for joining me. Please like, share, and tag somebody on this and we'll catch up with you next time. Take care and God bless.